Displetosaurus wilsoni was described last year as a new species of Displetosaurus, a genus of large tyrannosaurid dinosaurs coming from North America, and especially northern North America. It's been suggested that they're actually not that closely related to Tyrannosaurus rex directly. However, with the description of Displetosaurus wilsoni, they actually said no, these actually do form an anagenetic series, meaning that Displetosaurus and the Displetosaurus species evolved directly into the later, more derived Tyrannosaurines, meaning things like Tarbosaurus, but also Tyrannosaurus rex. This paper, though, throws a bit of a wrench into different parts of that idea, and this is by looking at these fossils even more so. And what they found is actually, yeah, Displetosaurus wilsoni might still be its own species. It does plot out slightly separately from the other two already known species of Displetosaurus. However, more importantly, when they looked at more characters, they were able to see that it doesn't really seem like Displetosaurus evolved directly into the Tyrannosaurines. This is likely just to be one of a few papers looking at Displetosaurus wilsoni more closely, because the people who were authors and actually have the material were already talking about working on it more, but also because there was even an entire talk at the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting in October that basically said, hey, we don't think Displetosaurus wilsoni is its own genus. And they get into a few reasons for that that I'm not going to get totally into here because it's not published, it was just presented at a conference for feedback. So they're getting some feedback and probably going to work that into a new paper in the future. Now, to be fair to the first authors that described Displetosaurus wilsoni, they've admitted that they're not normally Tyrannosaurid workers. They just happened to find some during their course of field work and described the specimen and thought it was something new. So this kind of line of, is it its own taxa or is it something different, could be on either side of two very different ideas, and it's just gonna take more research to really find that out. Importantly though, it still might indicate anagenesis just within the Displetosaurus, where there's this kind of gradient from one species into the later species, and that seems possible. Anagenesis, for those who don't know, is the idea of one species evolving directly into another one, and it's really hard to prove in the fossil record because we just have isolated organisms here and there. We don't have a good line of, for example, some of the Galapagos birds actually moving to a new island and starting to change into something that is morphologically distinct from the other species already on the Galapagos. This kind of phylogenetic work, though, is really important for understanding how different groups of Tyrannosaurs actually evolved during the late Cretaceous of North America. And that's because it's not just things like Displetosaurus wandering around. You also have Teratophonius and Lythronax at similar time frames, but further south in North America. These southern Tyrannosaurids were given their own subgroup in this paper, Teratophonini, after Teratophonius, and they're distinguished by a few different characteristics such as having fewer than 13 teeth on each side of the maxilla, as well as having a coarse texture on the sides of the jugal bone and a long process on the front of the frontal bone, among a number of other traits. This shows that there was a pretty significant range difference between some of the northern Tyrannosaurus, like Displetosaurus, but also a lot of the southern Tyrannosaurus, like Teratophonius. But importantly, Tyrannosaurus rex, once it evolved, seemed to exist both in the north and in the south, and the important thing is there are, again, based on talks at Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting, some fossils of potentially something related to or the same as Tyrannosaurus rex from pretty far south in North America, including some material from Mexico and parts of Texas. So maybe Tyrannosaurus rex, despite being closer to Displetosaurus, actually evolved even further south in North America and was able to migrate northwards and take over a lot of that ecospace. This would be a little bit odd for a few reasons though, First of all, the Tyrannosaurines are very close to the Displetosaurines, they're closely related. It doesn't make sense entirely for why the Tyrannosaurines would be only in the south and the Displetosaurines only in the north. Additionally, some of the Tyrannosaurines are known, again, from North America, but then you have things like Zuching Tyrannus and Tarvosaurus, both from Asia, meaning at some point they crossed the Bering Land Bridge and were able to migrate between these continents. And not necessarily a known species was able to do that, but one of their ancestors was able to. Don't know why that's happening. It's really hard to say for sure. And that's unfortunate. It would be really nice to know so that we can understand exactly where the first Tyrannosaur us actually evolved, as well as many of the other species that are closely related to it. What this means is that Displetosaurus wilsoni and the potential for anagenesis in Tyrannosaurids is going to go through a lot of changes likely. And it'll be a lot based on which paper's the most recent one out. And based on the talks at SVP, if you know, you know, there's going to be a lot of back and forth on this.